Today on the channel, I channel my inner archaeologist with Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The spirit of the warrior will run forever. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for a first here on the channel as we dive into the first figure from the Hasbro Indiana Jones line with Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But for all your Indiana Jones needs and a whole lot more, make sure you're hitting up DJC Collectibles. Use discount code 8 off DJC to save 8%. Remember, that's in Canadian dollars. You guys in North America, I should say America, you can save as it is a little bit cheaper than what is shown on their website. So remember that. Got to get a deal out there. But Indiana Jones coming to us with a brand new toy line. Indie Mania running wild. Of course, we got a new movie coming out this summer. And you're probably saying to yourself... Kyle, what are you doing here? You've said numerous times on the channel you've never seen an Indiana Jones movie, and that is very true. I've said that numerous times here on the channel, but all of that changed over the weekend, last weekend to be specific. As I said, I got this figure coming. You know what? Now is the time. I'm going to grab the kids. So I said, Emma and L, let's watch this movie about an archaeologist and see how good it really is. And they said, uh, okay. So we all went downstairs, watched on the couch, and we watched Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time. We had an 8-year-old, a 12-year-old, and an old man like me all sitting here watching it for the first time ever uh, together and giving our thoughts. And I can tell you, the kids were bored to tears. Yes, they were. They were bored to tears. I don't know. Things have changed. Times marched on. And it's so funny because it came out like, what was it, 83? Uh, it's been a long time. So it's been 40 years since it came out. So it's kind of like me in like 1988 watching a movie from like the 40s or something. I mean, that's kind of how you put it. It feels weird that way. So the kids, they were in and out of it. They watched the whole thing. They stayed through it, but it didn't change their life. They had no desire to watch any of the other movies. I said, well... We made it through this one. We should probably watch all the rest of them. They said, no way, we're out. But I am going to stick to it. I always finish these things. If I started it, I'm going to see all these movies. So I'm eventually going to get to the rest of these. I honestly hope business picks up a little bit because, once again, just like them, it really didn't change my life a whole lot. I mean, a scientist, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jones, I mean, just a teacher and stuff and going on these... I don't know. It was all right. I'm sure I would have enjoyed it more as a little kid in the 80s, I'd have to think. But going into it clean, not knowing the story, not knowing anything. It's funny, as I remember at the beginning, there was that big ball that kind of went down and chased him and stuff. And I've seen that scene a million times. I guess I just never knew what Indiana Jones movie it was from. So I was a little bit surprised. with that. I said, oh, okay, I've seen this clip of this scene before. But the rest, I really didn't know anything about. Uh, I found it really interesting with the Nazis, of course. Kind of makes sense. There's a little bit of fact in all this. As we know, the Nazis got a lot of treasures and paintings and things like that. So it makes sense that they were uh, looking for the Ark. But then it got kind of supernatural at the end and kind of lost me a little bit i mean there was some cool effects when he burned his hand that was pretty cool that one nazi guy and when they all melted at the end it really felt like a very quick finish to the movie as well uh, they went to the finish quick is what they did at that one but i'm not gonna say i'm ever gonna see it again probably didn't change my life in any way at least i know right now but it was okay i could see how people would have liked it i could see how if i watched it as a little like five six seven eight year old kid i probably would have enjoyed it a lot more than uh, all these years later but it is what it is, and it's, uh, uh, you know, hollowed grounds for many people, and I do understand that. We all got our stuff. We all got our own Devil's Rejects and uh, movies like that we love, but it was okay. I just don't see me watching it again. I hope business picks up and some of the other movies get better, so we'll see what happens uh, in there. Maybe uh, we'll do figure reviews, and we'll talk about that. We'll see what happens, but we're going to do this one like we do all the other ones here on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. And, of course, plastic-free packaging here with Hasbro. What are we doing? And Indiana Jones has this line. There's a little kid's line. Uh, retro card of carded figures, throwback ones. A lot of Indiana Jones stuff coming out. It'll be interesting how well they sell. Will they go to clearance or will they actually move through the peg? Uh, somewhere in the middle is my guess here. But I have to think Indiana Jones will be the best seller of the bunch. This is really the only one I want of the set. I figured it'd be cool to have a representation of Indiana Jones, maybe mixed in with my G.I. Joes, Star Wars, Marvel Legends. Who knows? I think it just works. And being a Hasbro property here... 
Uh, we'll see how well it compares with Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe, and stuff like that later on in this video. But let's take a look at the packaging first. Very slim packaging. Very similar to kind of Star Wars, I guess, that same box size. Uh, but definitely different packaging colors here with the yellows and the reds. A little bit bright. A little bit of adventure. The Indiana Jones logo here always kind of screams adventure. Uh, I don't know. It's funny how a logo and coloring can kind of do that for you. You got Indy and his trusty whip there. Of course, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. The packaging has a different feel to it. It's like, I can't really explain it. Almost like a nice varnish feel or something to it. But the packaging definitely just doesn't feel plain Jane. It feels kind of uh, nice. It feels nice. We'll go with that. On the side, instead of a build-a-figure, you're building an artifact. I don't know. I guess I'm not going to be building the artifact. I don't think I'm getting all these figures here. But you never know. Maybe I'll stumble across them. I don't know. Who knows? Probably not, though. But there's the cross cell if you're looking for the rest of the wave. Got a little glamour shots over here. There he is looking really good. And then, of course, the back of the package, very similar to other Hasbro properties currently. You got a glamour shot, and then you got one that kind of details what's in the package. And then you got all the Mr. T jibber jabber down low. I don't think, nope, there's no blurbs, anything like that, which, gosh, just missing. I feel so bad for all these copywriters that have been out of a job lately, but uh, they could have put something down here. Indiana Jones searching uh, for the Ark of the Covenant uh, in this first action pack feature. I mean, they could have put something down there, but. Apparently not in the cards for whatever reason, but let's get them open. We're going to go through the top. Not really sure how to do these as it is new to me here, but everything's plain in there. See you later. Goodbye. Get the big old detailed junk sheet. See you later, Spider-Man style. Goodbye. And then we got Indy falling out here. We got stuff right here. This is very interesting. So this is the first time I think I've seen where they put some stuff on the cardboard. Seems like good use of the cardboard here to me. Uh, build an artifact right there, kind of a paint by numbers. Here's how it needs to be done. So it kind of gives you a little instruction. So I do like that. I think they should put more stuff on this cardboard instead of it just being plain Jane. See you later. Goodbye. Then we get the Indiana Jones and we get like a big map in the parchment paper. So G.I. Joe, all these other ones, we've seen different parchment paper. It's not plain Jane here. It's a nice map. So I'm looking at South America, America uh, on this one. Oh, there's that whip. There's some hands. Boy, a lot of accessories with this pack too, which is interesting. As we do get some Marvel Legends that have like no accessories, and then you get something like this. It's just caked full of accessories. See you later. Goodbye. Get old Indy out of the package here. There it is. And I'm going to guess he feels more Star Wars-like because I believe the same team works on Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. See you later. Goodbye. So that's how I'm going to guess this is going to feel a little bit more. But we do get the artifact pieces here. So we get these two birds on the corner pieces that clip in. Uh, it does say one and two on it. So really not going to do anything with this. I guess sell this like you sell any Build-A-Figure part. But let's be honest. If you're collecting the Indiana Jones line, you're probably buying Indiana Jones. So I would have to think out of all the Build-A-Figure parts, these are going to be the most worthless of the bunch. I would have to imagine that to be the case. And then we do get a little, I don't know what this is, a little... Uh, Oh, this is, I think this is the little uh, little guy. Yeah, the little guy. You know, at the beginning when that ball was rolling after him, he had to have like the sand and he got to weight it right there and he gave the old switcheroo. I think that's what this one is here. So that's a nice attention to detail. I'm here for that. That's okay with me. So we get that. Then we get uh, two different whips with the Indiana Jones. Uh, I haven't seen anybody swing a whip since uh, Dirty Dutchman tells like uh, Indiana Jones does. So good for Indy learning that trick. It's a good trick. It's not as easy as you think it would be, but uh, some of the great whippers of all time, Indiana Jones and Dirty Dutch Mantel. So there you go. But a nice whip here. Would have been nice if this was like bendy wire or something. It's not. And it just kind of folds up on you. But if it was bendy wire, you could have it out. You could have it rolled up. You could choose your own whip adventure. But unfortunately, that's not going to be the case here. It does kind of have a threaded feel to it. it kind of feels like rope you know how it's got the braid kind of in there you got the handle on it but it's all in one color is what it is but then you do get one uh lasso all lassoed up right here so uh, you can kind of have this ready to go if need be so choose your own whip adventure really at the end of the day then you do get a little pistol for Indy here, all in black. Would have loved a little color to this one, but it's a nice old school pistol. This just reminds me of the good old days when pistols were looking like this. People were carrying a side piece like this. Very, very small weapon, easily lost, but on point for the Indy character, at least in the movie I saw. We get that. Then we get down to some hands, and usually in Star Wars line, we don't ever get hands. So to get him with Indiana Jones, I think is pretty cool. Looks like he's got a uh, yep, a pistol hand there, a trigger hand over here, and then a big open hand to hold the uh, whatever that gold thing is called. And then we get two fists of fury for Dr. Jones. He's never been scared to throw a fist or two if he needs to. 
and then we get a whip hand and then in a little bit of an open hand so choose your own adventure i think to me he needs to have the gun hand and the whip hand maybe i, I don't know if he's ready to fight a sword guy a guy was you know doing all those sword tricks at him he'll just pull that gun out and shoot him that was probably the best scene of the movie really uh it made me chuckle from the couch i'll, I'll tell you that much uh but a decent amount of accessories especially when we compare them to some of the marvel legends and some of the star wars figures we've gotten recently they've really packed indiana jones with a lot of stuff here but now we get down to Indiana Jones, he's looking up to the sky, so I don't know what's going on. Now, hat is not removable. The hat is staying on there, so uh, that's just the way it's going to be. And like I guessed, he really does feel like a Star Wars Black Series figure. It's kind of what it feels like to me in hand. Uh, something about it just has that feel. The arms, the legs, uh, it makes a lot of sense, I guess. Like I said, they're supposedly splitting the team, is working on both of these, so that does make some sense. But the hat does stay on. I love the brown, worn-out leather jacket. I mean, this is his uh, travel and stuff. He's looking for artifacts, things like that, archaeology, the desert, the jungle, you name it. He's got some weariness to his jacket, his hat, uh, his pants. Uh, you're going to have that kind of stuff. So this does look like uh, Indiana Jones in the movie, at least in a few of the scenes there for sure. He's got his satchel. I believe it's not a Merce back then. It was called a satchel back in the day. So he does got that satchel. Uh, it can be removed. You just got to work it out there. I think it's one of those things that you should probably just leave it on. But if you really wanted it off, you could. He does got a holder on his side there for his pistol. So you can store that away if need be. Always like that as well. Uh, the jacket is not removable. I mean, it can come off, but it's going to look really funny. Uh, it's not going to match up very well if you do take it off, but it is removable. He's got that undershirt there, nice soft plastic underneath. Kind of an off-white color, I guess, undershirt. Got the sculpted in pockets, things like that. Got a decent tanned old Dr. Jones here. Uh, his tan does match the face into the neck. Uh, big neck area on him. Uh, no movement out of that neck, I don't think. Nope, I was wondering if it had a joint down there. It does not, but the head does for sure. Up, down, all around, side to side. Plenty of head movement on him. Arms go all the way around. Single jointed elbows, side to side, very Star Wars-esque. Hands back and forth as well. Waist articulation, side to side. Big old Indiana Jones splits. You never know when he's got to jump over somebody. He's ready to go. Uh, he's ready to jump across the hill or whatever he might have to do. So we have that going on. Thigh cut, of course. Double jointed. Nope, nope. Take that back. Single jointed. And he can even break his leg if you need to. It can go even far forward there, which looks a little strange. Uh, but he's got the single jointed knee. And then you do get the little side to side action. Very Super 7-like. Ankles back and forth, side to side. Good ankle pivot on this. And, of course, he's got his khakis here and you got some rufflage at the bottom uh looking really nice but all around a good wear to him a good look to him uh i don't have any problems with this definitely looks like indiana jones i think if you're familiar with the movie you know him you're gonna say oh yeah it's indiana jones or maybe harrison ford uh you're gonna get one of the other two here i think everybody knows who this is even me without seeing the movies if somebody handed this to me and said who is this you're gonna know it's indiana jones so that is definitely a good thing but I'm actually surprised how many accessories this came with and how good this figure feels. So that's good if you're an Indiana jones a holic that's your favorite property. You were so jazzed for this line. If the rest of the line has this quality and kind of looks like this, has the same kind of flavor to it, I think you'll be more than happy with this line going forward. Uh, to me, it's one of those lines that I'm not going to collect. I'm not that invested. Who knows? Maybe I see the rest of the movies and it all kind of clicks together and I absolutely just am bowled over and all of a sudden I'm all in on Indiana Jones. I guess it could happen. Stranger things have happened. Happened. Uh, but definitely this figure is the one to get and I can see a ton of people buying just this figure skipping the rest they want Indiana Jones represented on their uh, miscellaneous shelf or whatever at work you name it I could see that happening for a lot of people and I think we'd all agree on that does he fit on a ringside collectible uh, stand of course make sure you get the Mattel stand use discount code Kyle save yourself 10% and what do you know Indy fits right there perfectly fits really good on that stand fits really nice really tight so if you guys got some stands laying around, it will work for him. Works really good from where I sit. So not a bad figure at all. I wouldn't say it's the greatest figure of the year. I don't know if it's going to make any top 10 lists. But for what it is and what it represents, slam dunk. I don't know what else you can find fault in this one. And like I said, limited knowledge over here. Uh, but this seems really, really good to me. But let's do some comparisons here. Might as well compare him to the Star Wars Harrison Ford. I believe this is Return of the Jedi, the one that came with the uh, Endor poncho and stuff. But same size, same scaling. So Indy and his universe should work with the Star Wars universe if you really want it to. So we do got some of that going there. I did grab a Marvel Legends. I got Longshot hanging around here. So once again, Longshot fits right in there. Same size. I think that works really well as well. 
A lot of wells going on, so that works. Uh, I got AJ Styles. How about WWE Mattel? A lot bigger. Not going to scale with your wrestling figures, unfortunately. So uh, a little bit out of scale as far as AJ Styles goes. Uh, but then the final, last but not least, the greatest Hasbro figure probably released of the last 20 years. I think we'd all agree on that. Of course, you got Flint, of course, from G.I. Joe. And Indiana Jones could be another Joe member down the line. You could always have that kind of work out, mix him in the group. Who knows? But... Not bad. I think if you're trying to mix him into some universes, at least Hasbro universes, you can do that with Indiana Jones as well. So a lot to like about this one. It'll be interesting to see how this line takes off. It'll be interesting how deep they go from all the movies. I'm sure there'll be figures with the new movie, things like that. It's definitely a property that could go on for a while, but definitely has an end to it. There is an end in sight for Indiana Jones because there's only X amount of material to pull through, unless they go to young Indiana Jones uh, and then other things like, I'm sure there was an Indiana Jones comic book at one time. I guess they could go into that direction, but I don't know how well that would sell. And we see a lot of these Hollywood movie properties don't do so hot at retail. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons hasn't even came out yet, and its stuff's going to clearance already. We'll see how this all ends up shaking up. But Indiana Jones, a popular property from the 80s, a toy line we haven't seen in a long time, a new movie coming around. I got to think all that kind of works together for it. So I think we will have a pretty good uh, Indiana Jones run out there on the retail shelves, at least through summer. After that, possibly could see some clearance. That's what I'm betting. That's what I'm putting my clairvoyant hat on. I'm playing Nostradamus right here at the table. So there it is, Indiana Jones. Let me know your thought in the comments down below. What's your favorite Indiana Jones movie? Should I just call it quits? If I didn't think it was a game changer movie, should I stop there or should I go on to the Temples of Dooms and the Crystal Palaces and... Uh, or maybe Crystal Palace might be Buck Owens, I think, actually, now that I think of it. But uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. And if you're picking this line up, if you're all in, you're passing, you're just getting indie, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to like this video. We made it this far. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bells. we got videos every single day. And then don't forget about the Patreon channel, early access to videos like this, bonus content, exclusive content. You name it, a whole lot going on over there on the old Patreon channel. So for Indiana Jones, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.